Today what we'll be doing is discussing American made pocket watches and I may show you one or two examples of a European watch. I'm not positive yet. The American made pocket watch as I've discussed before was uh, the pocket watches in, in the United States were made between the early 1800s into uh, the late 1930s early uh, mid 1940s. There were a few companies making pocket watches all the way through World War II. After World War II, most of the American watch manufacturing equipment was shipped to Europe for the reconstruction of Europe. And that's about when we stopped making really good mechanical watches in this country. Before World War II, the best mechanical watches were made in the United States. That's an attestment to American engineering. European watches prior to World War II did not keep very good time. They were more uh, slight function but very decorative. So European watches tended to look much fancier, much more elegant than American made watches. American made watches kept more accurate time. Uh, some of them looked more utilitarian and believe it or not, uh, I still to this day believe that they were the best engineered. So let's continue. If you are going to begin collecting, repairing, restoration of pocket watches, or if you want to buy and resell pocket watches, or if you want to set up a little shop and fix watches for your customers, this book is an inevitable addition. It's a, it's a necessity for your business or for your collecting. This book comes out about every year. Uh, it hasn't changed much. I have the 2005 edition here. I've got a couple older editions that, uh, on my shelf, but this book, even in today's publication, is still the de facto standard for pocket watch collecting. It explains everything you're going to need about watches and Pretty much everything's here. If you want to know about the dates and plates and jewels and all the functions of a watch, most of it's in here. They don't. This book is not a tutorial on how to fix watches, but it does explain how watches work, how the balance wheel works. We'll be covering that in our courses. Also, the escapements, the train, everything is covered in this book. So an explanation of the function of the watches is very good. In addition, the part that I use the most is in reference to the watch values and the grades of watches. And there are other books that you'll need to get if you want to have a full understanding of watch grade and materials. Uh, pretty much they're all explained. Waltham was probably the best company that kept the best records of all their watches. So you can see, you know, if you follow along here, we have American Walton Watch Company size 10. And then it'll explain to you what model you have, the number of jewels, if it's adjusted to five positions, uh, if it's an open face or, or a hunter case, if it's gold filled or nickel, and then the values. Now, these values change. Uh, you can't go by these values anymore. Watch collectors in today's economy have stopped collecting watches, but there are still many people who are getting into it. And you know, you're going to find some watches are very, very valuable. Prices exceed these values by two, three, tenfold. And that other watches, you know, for example, if we take a look at a common watch, I'm just going to pull up an 18 size Waltham, an Appleton Tracy. 15 jewel open face, you know, typically in excellent condition that says here the value is 300. That watch today would probably sell around 220 to 250. Um, if it were truly in excellent condition, you, depending on where you are, you might be able to get more money. Uh, it really depends. So this book explains the models, what they are, and their current values. In addition, the author of this book has done a wonderful job. You can look up the serial number and approximate 
the year and month that the watch was made. There are Walton books, Elgin books, and Hamilton books that'll tell you the months that production ran, but uh, for a good reference, this is a good starting point. So if we take a serial number of a watch and we look it up uh, our chart, for instance, serial number 5,800 was made in 1892. So you can kind of look at that and judge by the next year starting production number and you can find out when your watch was produced. You won't always be able to find the graded material. I mean, this is stuff you'll learn from experience and it's an invaluable tool to know. You'll also see some examples in the book. Uh, Walton, like I said, is the best documented, so you know, you're gonna see a lot of information on Walton. You'll find all the American-made pocket watches are in the beginning. It'll go into European watches and then into wrist watches. So if you were gonna continue into wrist watches, this is definitely a necessity because pocket watches and wrist watches all kind of fall into the same, same thing. So here you can see Omega. Tate Philippe, pre-1850 non-gold generic watches, and then you know, you know, you probably will never see these watches in the United States, but they, there are a few of them floating around, and occasionally I have customers who will come in with, with something from Europe. You know, their family came over here years ago, and so these are good. This is a good book to have. Like I said, it, it includes mechanical watches. There are no quartz watches in this book. This is all mechanical. So you know you're gonna you're gonna have to understand that companies made mechanical watches up until the 1960s when uh, quartz started coming out, and then in the 80s when it became very popular uh, and very low cost to produce quartz watches. You saw the death of the American and European mechanical watch industry. It's now a kind of a not a Necessity to have a mechanical watch. It's it's a luxury to have a mechanical watch You'll see anything in here like I said uh, wristwatches date back to the early 1900s There's a few examples that are pre 1900, but you'll never see one and Good to know about but I can't imagine most of you will ever see one Long jeans and you'll see this this is a vintage book so th this covers vintage not newer products so when you see newer products out on the street they're not going to appear in this book at all don't worry about it this is for vintage and antique watches again it goes in to explain all the little idiosyncrasies parts good reference how things work uh, the number of tooth required for each gear how each escapement works there's all kinds of things in here you'll, you'll see get a copy of this book Get it on Amazon, you can get it at a bookstore. It's a great book to have. Every everybody who's going to restore watches or collect watches needs to have this book. With that said, let's move on to the next step. So American watches come in a variety of sizes. So I'm going to just put some reference down here and, and show you. Here we have a zero size hunting case pocket watch. We have a 16 size Hunter case pocket watch. This is a uh, Hamilton 18 size. You'll see some iterations of 18 size watches, an 18 size Hunter case. This is an 18 size Seth Thomas open face. So you can see they, they do come in a variety of sizes. This is a six size Hunter case. Uh, six size, zero size, they do come in open face. Another six size Hunter. And then we have the most common watch you'll see in the United States, which is a 12 size pocket watch. And you can see the size differences between these. 12 size pocket watches uh, were the every man's pocket watch. So we, we tend to see those a lot, and they come in a lot of different flavors and colors and styles. Never, uh, never imagine that. There was such a variety of, of watches out there, but there are. Some of these will have metal dials. For instance, these two have metal dials. This is a porcelain dial. This watch at some point in time looks all yellow, but uh, that's just the 
old plastic dial or old plastic crystal that somebody put on there. This originally would have had a glass crystal. Somebody somewhere along uh, 1940s or 50s probably broke the crystal. And after World War II, it was very popular, cheap crystal, uh, cheap plastic. So they made all these crystals in plastic and you can see as exposure to light, they yellow. I'm not a big fan of plastic crystals. We typically, when we restore a watch, we'll put glass on the watch and that way you have the luster of the white porcelain dial. And you can see how these are removed and tightened. Uh, this is a screw on, screw off bezel. Same with the back, the back unscrews. Sometimes we can get them off and sometimes we can't. These watches are all in need of service. And they are part of my own collection. So there's the gold filled case and you can tell a gold filled case First and foremost, whether or not it says warranty on it. The next thing would be whether or not it's a bendable item. Now here we have a beautiful 12 size Elgin pocket watch. This watch is 17 jewels. In the example, the first example we're gonna show you in cleaning a pocket watch or disassembly, we're going to disassemble a 16 size pocket watch very similar to this. This Elgin pocket watch, you can see the serial number there. That gives us good reference to go look it up. Here we have uh, the ratchet and the winding wheels. You can see here somebody unscrewed that. So I typically like to look at these and just, you know, as I open them up, I give them a quick glance to see what works and what doesn't. This wants to run, but it's not running well. And of course, the screw's loose. So this watch will have to be completely serviced. And it has a nice gold filled case that screws on and off. And we're just gonna put that aside for now. Now the, you can see it, an open face watch. Typically, the stem comes out the top at the 12th position. And on an open face watch, this is almost always how they'll be. Once in a great while, you'll run across an open face watch that the stem is at the three position. Now the reason for that is, at some point in time, somebody may have taken a hunter case movement and put it in an open face watch. There is a difference between the hunter case movements and the, and the open face movements in that the position is the position of the clutch is always shown at the three on a hunter case watch. So for instance, if we open up this watch and we look at the dial, 12 o'clock is still on top. The crown and stem protrude at the 12 on the open face and at the three on the hunter case. So good to know when you see a movement and it has the clutch at the three position, it was probably made for a hunter case movement. Now, occasionally you'll see somebody will take a hunter case movement and they'll put it in an open face watch and then you have an open face watch with the stem and winding clutch at the three position. Some manufacturers made the watches that way. Some manufacturers actually made their dials to do that. And you can see that in this case, the, the second hand on each of these watches is at the six o'clock position, which means that this movement was designed specifically to be a hunter case watch. It's not an open face watch movement, it's a hunter case watch movement, along with this being an open face, and that the mechanics of the watch are manufactured so that the winding clutch is at the three position and the second hand is at the six position. Whereas an open face movement has the winding clutch at the 12 position and the second hand at the six position. Six. 
should always be aware of that. Now some of you are probably wondering what's an open face in a hunting case pocket watch or why do they call it a hunting case pocket watch? If you don't know by now, we're going to explain that to you. A hunter case pocket watch is a watch that usually gentlemen who hunted would have and the reason for the extra cover was so that when it was in your pocket and you were hunting you wouldn't damage the watch you couldn't necessarily break the crystal it could happen but it didn't typically happen and it was much more for function at first and then it became a decorative thing for this example here this hunting case pocket watch which is in excellent shape and it is an american walton pocket watch you see how we open that push the button and it flies open again this case is dirty it needs to be cleaned when it is clean this will spring all the way open uh, we have the we have the second hand at the six position the winding clutch at the three position this is a specific hunting case watch movement for a hunting case pocket watch case this is a six size watch these were typically made for women and they were made to hang on a pendant so for example we have a bale here and they would have worn this on a chain along their neck and it was a decorative not just a function thing we have a dust cover so you open the back case and we have a beautiful dust cover and this watch again is in excellent shape and once we open that we get to the movement so here's the walton movement it's a non-adjusted seven jewel movement and it, the movement's in great shape it's just again dirty it's been sitting around for a hundred years and it needs to be cleaned so we'll be doing that with this watch here now you'll see in some cases we have a 12 size gentleman's watch or everyday pocket watch this is the american walton watch company let's see if we can open this up some of these open up well some of them don't uh, this is a pop open uh, let's pop this open When you open a pocket watch, you want to be very, very careful not to scratch the case because you could damage it and that would prevent you from restoring the case. Once we open this up, you see this doesn't have a dust cover. The dust cover is the case itself. And in this example, what we have is a beautiful seven jewel watch. And it wants to run you can tell that because it's you know it's opening up it, it wants to click it's just not running very well and you can see this has a three quarter what they call a three quarter plate where three quarters of the movement is covered up by bridges there we have the barrel bridge the ratchet the winding ratchet the setting clutch the train bridge the balance cock balance wheel and and on the front, so I'm just going to snap it closed. The front cover is pop open. And we're just going to open it up very gently. And again, what you don't want to do is scratch the case. That pops off and we have access to our hands and dials so there is a 12 size put that aside there is another 12 size this also has a pop open case and again now we can see an example of another Walton watch but this is a 15 jewel watch so Oh, 17 jewel watch. So if we look at 
when you look at a watch and you start to see jewels in different places, you know that the more jewels it has, we just, we'll discuss that later, the better the watch will run. Again, we have a watch here that kind of wants to run, but not so well. It needs a full service. This is a gold-filled case. In this case, it tells us it's gold-filled. Sometimes they don't always say that. Again, three-quarter bridge. Let's take a look at this Hamilton. This Hamilton, uh, you, you've noticed that some watches, when you pull the crown out, let's grab a watch here. When you pull the crown out, you can set the watch. Push it in, and then you're winding the spring. Here we can wind the spring, but we can't pull the stem out and set the watch. There's a reason for that. The next thing we want to discuss here is when you open up a watch, you're going to look for little indicators as to what kind of a watch this is. Obviously it's an open face because we have the second hand at the 6 and the winding clutch at the 12 position. There's a little lever here. and If I pull that out, I can now change and set the time. Once you're done, you push that back in and you put the bezel back onto the watch. Oops. And you're trying to show people how these work. It doesn't always go with it easy. Now, if we look at the back of the watch, there's very little difference. Except that you'll see that this is a full plate bridge. This is the barrel bridge, holds the mainspring barrel. Here's your balance cock. And then here's the train bridge, which it holds the entire train under one bridge. We're going to do an example of cleaning a watch like this. Uh, we've done an example uh, in the next course, which will go through disassembly of the watch. It's going to disassemble a three-quarter bridge 16 size watch. We're eventually going to take this watch apart and show you how to disassemble, clean and reassemble an 18 size full bridge movement. There are very few examples of full bridge 16 size. 18 size because the watch got bigger, uh, more support, uh, better operation, more accurate watch. They went to full plate. And that pretty much what you're going to see on 18 size watches. However, you'll see some examples of 18 size watches that are three quarter bridge. Manufacturers made them in different flavors. Now we showed you a zero size and a six size watch. Now this, uh, this again, we have a mechanical watch here that is lever set. You pull the little lever out. And get your finger under there. And now we can set the time. When we're done setting the time, always push the lever back. You can wind it, and you're off and running. So this is a six size, and we're going to pop open that back cover. And the dust cover. And you'll see that this watch is brass. It is 15 jewel. It has a safety pinion. We'll be discussing that too in our restoration part. You'll see the jewels here. The watch does want to run, so it's a good candidate for cleaning and sale. As far as I'm going to do in my store, we'll clean this up and sell it. Case is in good condition. It is a gold filled case. Again, the watch reference book will have gold filled and gold case markings. You should always have that handy. You'll see sometimes an odd shaped watch, octagon, hexagon, you'll see a variety of different shapes. And you're always going to look for a little opening. These cases do not unscrew. Once in a while you'll find one that does, but 99 times out of 100 they just pop open and they are keyed. There's a little key on the case, a little notch on the cover, and those must go in the same place. This watch is not an American watch. It is a European watch. And you can see we have a three-quarter bridge. 
and you'll see that there's a lot of play in the parts and this is what I mean by lower quality of a European watch. They, they weren't very good quality and in Europe, go back to the late 1800s and early 1900s, in the watch industry, Europeans were like the Chinese are today. They made fake American watches and they sent them over here at half the price. And we did have a, you know, there's are quite a few out there, but they don't work as good. They don't fix as good. They don't definitely not run as well. Thank you. This is Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. I know this was kind of a long video, maybe a little bit on the boring side, but it's a good introduction to the American pocket watch. And in the next video, we'll be tearing down a pocket watch piece by piece. I'll be going through it with you step by step. And I hate to ask, but uh, if you do find these videos enjoyable and you want to keep going on with, with uh, some of the work that I'll be doing here and uh, some of the teaching that I'll be doing here on jewelry and watches, please support me on Patreon because every little bit helps. You'll find a link below. And uh, if you're looking for that book that I went over in the first part of this video, there's a link for that also down below. You can get that on Amazon.com. Thank you and take care.